<laughs> I was getting worried for a minute. It's uh, shining like a diamond. It's like red lightning. So we, uh, we climbed out of camp uh, this morning with the goal of getting a, getting a better look at these bears. We got a little ridge we got to run up. So we've got three days of food on our back and everything to stay up there for a few. We're hoping to take something in the next couple days, be able to pack it back down. Mark's down at the bottom with the llamas hunting a different drainage. and. Uh, we got a long climb to do today. I just glassed, kind of glassed across it, and it's too early. I mean, you could see him this early, but we just haven't been seeing very many bears early in the morning, so we're gonna get across this creek, put 2,500 feet on us, get up to this little perch, and we'll have a good advantage of everything that uh, we were looking at yesterday, but a lot closer where those five bears were. Climb has begun. Ryan's down there. We're just e bopping our way up to the top. It's gonna be fun. Pretty heavy pack with eight liters of water, seven, eight, something like that. I like how this pack carries heavy weight. It's not as flexible just by the nature of its design, but I do like how it carries heavy loads. It feels lighter than it should, but the uh, downside is when you're flexing over logs or whatever your board here you're, you're strapped to a pretty stiff pack which doesn't bother me I just loosen the straps a bit because the loads not heavy when the loads heavy I'm not bending and arching my back anyway because the loads too heavy so it's been an interesting test I really like it though I especially like the top lid and the meat shelf, which I wouldn't normally use, but it's so handy, easy to use. A little day pack set up. Anyway, this is just amazing today. Out and we 
can run the ridge with a more gradual slope. Looks like a bunch of max matchsticks got dropped right here. It's just blow down somewhere. He'd move around a little bit and get a little bit of his swaggers to see, get a better, better idea, but he's not a XL and he's not a small. He's almost got that lightning look to him. Sometimes they are in this one. This one's kind of hard to judge. Sometimes it's easy. This one's not. I like that color. Yeah, it is beautiful. He's kind of got a stomp to him, you notice? Yeah. Like a lot of weight. I think we take him right. Man, he's he's got the calm. Oh, he's got when he's he's moving around now and he looks a little bigger than he did when he wasn't because you can kind of see his stomp that hurdle on his shoulders his feet come down with some force unless he's acting really well but he's kind of got that that bulldog like he's got the color he's not black i like that he's He's almost the color of red lightning. I like it. Should we get in and yeah, try to get him? Let's take him. Okay. Not a bad bear. Where he's at? Okay. Well, we're gonna uh, make a play on this bear. We just ditched 90% of what's in our packs. We'll probably end up camping right back here tonight. That bear's working its way down this ridge, so we're gonna kinda cut the distance. We got a little perch up here, probably 200 yards. Shave the distance, he's 800, and he's coming our way, so hopefully we kinda connect in the middle and get a good shot on him. Back down to where we just came from. Back down into the saddle. Try to keep eyes 
上来
is so wild. Ryan, <laughs> those grizzly are unnerving. Just as Brian laid his head down to take a sleepy sleep. Up on the hill, just to the right, probably maybe a hundred yards from where we've been watching for red, a big old grizz comes out, stands up, and as soon as we see him, red shows up right there in that one slit. Looked like they were looking at each other, and red turned to go back this way. I don't know where that grizz went. He was behind a tree and now I haven't seen him for a while. I can't see Red either, so maybe they both just kind of went the opposite directions, but I don't know. All I know is our little sweet spot up here is a big old giant grizz parked in it. And that sucks. Not cool. No. It's a lot of bears though, that's three different bears just from this little spot that we've looked at. But I want to know where Red went. If Red dumped off into this ball, we got a great shot at him. But I don't know where that G bear went. So I gotta watch my back now. That's a little unnerving. Yeah. But we've been wanting Red to go into that bowl so we can play the wind right. It didn't look like he, he wasn't like in a hurry. He just, they just kind of turned and Red went one way and the G bear was standing there. And he was behind the tree and I haven't seen him come out from behind it yet. But it's been a little while. Well, the Grizz came in and messed everything up. We haven't seen red. We haven't seen red in a while. We haven't seen that grizz either. We look back at the film and that grizz cut straight across where red was, where he was napping, and where he kind of went off. We saw him turn left, and in the film we see that grizz go right, pretty near where he was going. So we don't know if he just kept pushing him over the ridge or what, but. The wind still isn't right, so we don't even want to get up here and look out there to see what's happening. We we're hoping they just kind of parked it behind these trees. But we can kind of see all around them. And we're not seeing anything right now, so they might have slipped up and over the ridge. But we're going to give it some more time. We need that cold air to start coming off the mountain. And... Uh, we can at least just get over here and sneak a peek into the big basin and see what's happening. Till then, we just wait. Well, we've been poking around off this edge, kind of skirting this hill, seeing if we can figure out where that red bear went and we think he went over the ridge and into this other camp. Keeping our distance, we're just inching our way there, looking around, see if we can find a bear. He could have stayed behind the timber and slipped his way through here, maybe without us seeing it, but must have been quick, he must have been bugging. We're gonna try to 
scooch up here. See if we can just get a look down in this draw. Awful thick down there. Yeah. All right, so we just got a hit on this bear. He went down into this thick creek bed. It's getting almost dark, so we're gonna head back, set up camp, come back here first thing in the morning. 
Hopefully he's piled up in the bottom, but we'll see. hard last night. Oh, Grizzly could have stomped right in on this tent. I wouldn't have woke up. Except I did flick three or four ticks out of my bag. I think they're probably on this shirt when I went to sleep last night. Felt them crawling all over me. That's gross. Yeah. I pulled a tick out of my pants just as we were falling asleep. For some reason, for some reason, a tick on my upper torso is bad but a tick down my pants really really bothers me I don't know there's something about below the belt that really creeps me out by the time we got our tent set up got a little food in us and went to bed it was about 11 11.30 
see if we can pick it up. There's a lot of brush in there, so here in a couple minutes we're gonna scooch back down to where we shot, dive in, and try to find that bear. see him um, last night. Dude, look at the head. He's huge. Look at that head. I'm telling you. Oh, jeez. Got a giant noggin. He's all scarred up. I didn't know he was this big. <laughs> that head is impressive, isn't it? So... How we didn't see him laying here last night, because I can see right where we shot from. Right now it's... Holy so. crap, look at the neck on that sucker. Look at the neck, Ryan. Yeah, he's a linebacker, man. <laughs> so, so right now we're 355 from where we shot, 355. And um, we shot him at 383. Somehow, we just couldn't see him. So we, we thought he went down to the creek. We could have just came in last night and grabbed him. But he died like that. It's, it's weird that, that late in the day, you know? Because you shoot a bear and you don't see it just crumble and it runs just out of your vision. Best thing to do is kind of back out and not, not go in and push it in case it wasn't the best hit. We didn't know that. We just didn't see it roll. But we could have easily, we could have easily just bombed over here and broke this thing down in Grizz country in the middle of the night. But, uh, gosh, red goes down. <laughs> He's, we had such such a hard time reading him when we first saw him because of the shade and he's got a huge melon but his ears are bigger than normal on a on an old bear just big old rounded ears He's a stud. An absolute stud. <laughs> oh, just a tank. Just an absolute tank. Look at the neck on this thing. He's got all these battle wounds all over his face. I mean, there's our stump that we were looking at right there. It's right there. He's just sparkling too. Shining like a diamond. We figured he was uh, replaying the footage. That shot, middle of the body is devastating. Yeah. 
that's where I put it. That's where I wanted it. Always middle to middle. But when we were, we looked back at the footage and it was hard to tell. It almost looked a little far back, but it wasn't. It was just the ripple, how that ripple rolled. Clearly it. 20 yards, he went like 25 yards. Yeah. Basically, as soon as he dropped out of the frame. Right out of the frame, he rolled. He, well, you know how it went silent? I thought if he was hurt, run into the bottom. We heard that wall. crash. That was the crash. He just ended. I thought he broke a stick, like cutting down into the canyon. That was just him to going down. What a beefcake, man! I just can't get over this. <laughs> oh, man, it's unreal. Beautiful blackberry. Just an amazing coat on him. Really nice. When that sun hits it, it's uh. Shining like a diamond. It's like red lightning. Can't really ask for more than this. No. No, except for some shade. Shade would be nice. Some gray jays. Well, we got this bear all broke down. It's all good. I got a couple quarters. Ryan has the shoulders and the head and the cape. He boned out one shoulder or both? Uh, I got them both boned out. Boned out the shoulders. But uh, we got a bit of a grind, huh? We'll see what kind of time we can make. Try to get back down to base camp, meet up with Mark Livesey and the Llama team. Team Llama. Can we just call Mark and have him come get us? <laughs> I'd like to call Mark and have him come get us. This is pretty gnarly for the Llamas, although they could do it for sure. They could do it. I think we might have to save their energy as they're just getting in shape. Save them for the Mark's bear. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Big red lightning down. It is. Check that box. Eat the meat. What do you think, Ryan? Yep, we checked the box all right. We got him. Now we gotta get this one all the way down to the bottom and then we gotta come grab two more bears from this mountain somewhere. But I don't see why we can't. There's a couple, I'm sure there's some bigger bears, just one ridge over. We just gotta sweat, sweat equity is all this mountain takes. It's brutal, but we'll do it. What does Anthony say? Soak it up, boys. That's what victory feels like. Sturdy pin. Mountain snow melt runoff. Right out of the ground, yeah. <sighs> These are hot. Yeah. Too hot. <laughs> oh, I think it's the sun, man. Is it the sun? And the temperature. Yeah. Not that much. Ryan, must be his long hair. He gets hot in the sun. Real hot. Melts him. 
must make him better in the winter because he's like a polar bear. Cold doesn't bother him much at all. quarter miles to go. Mostly flat. I can handle that. Alright, well, we made it to the main trail. We can see the llamas in our camp. It's nice and cool in these trees. Lambert's right over here. Victory. Gotta hang this meat, get it out of our bags, get it cooling off in the shade. We might throw it in the creek just to put a real cold chill on it just because how it sat overnight it smells good and it's and it was cool actually even though it sat overnight underneath that bear hide but didn't have a lot of fat bear fat just the fur and I think it was real cold at night so seemed to keep pretty good but nevertheless we need to put a better chill on it because we're not gonna leave for a few more days we probably got five more days before we're cruising out of here unless we kill a bear and then we're out but we got a couple more to go between Mark and I so hunt's still on all right folks thanks for watching this week's video much appreciated we really really appreciate all the support it's phenomenal the way you guys leave comments the way you like and you subscribe to the channel we know we're doing something right uh, getting all that and we're trying to respond to all those comments best we can we're doing a giveaway right now uh, if you leave a comment if you like and subscribe to the youtube channel you're entered to win a brand new Leopold rangefinder so go ahead and do that and we're going to pick a winner in about two weeks so you'll see the winner selected at the end of a future video. Uh, this video was fun to do. Um, not just to, to do the hunt, but to do the edit. You know, Ryan and I returned to the area where we saw Red Lightning and Chocolate 2.0. You know, this is, this is a return to an area where these two bears escaped us the previous year. And we didn't know if those bears were still going to be there. In fact, you know, I mean, what are the odds, right? So we went back, same same general time frame, gen, same area, exact same area. And lo and behold, you know, the whole mountain had bears on it, from grizzly to black bear, all like up in those tops and those ridges at high elevation. And it was interesting. Uh, same thing happened last year. And we spent days and days the pri previous year searching for black bears in country that looked like it would be full of black bears, and yet we didn't find any. And it wasn't until we climbed or started glassing at the tippy top of these mountains, at the top of the elevation in those areas, just below where the snow had melted. And, um, you know, ironically, we found those yellow uh, avalanche lilies. Just that's kind of the only thing that's popping, those glacier lilies or snow lilies. They call them that because those, those flowers pop up right as that snow melts off. And you can see it in the video, just little yellow flowers everywhere. Well, those... Those grizzly bears and those black bears love those things. Um, and uh, we also noticed that we see a lot of bears up in those tops in, in those regions when you see where there's water trickling down and where there's actual trees and cover, especially for black bears. Um, it's very rare in grizzly country for us to see black bears in wide open. They, they kind of want to be near timber or places they can outrun or get away from a grizzly bear, it, it seems. And ironically, you know, we did see grizzly up high, but they tended to be younger grizzly. The giant, dominant, massive grizzlies were down low, like where we, where, where we had our llama camp. And in fact, there's an interesting story coming up on the next episode where Ryan actually uh, has to run a grizzly off that's coming in after the llamas. And, uh, but he had the, you know, the wherewithal and the bravery to pull out his uh, camera uh, and his phone scope and film the bear uh, before he scared it away. Uh, a few gunshots uh, at the at the dirt um, were necessary, and it still didn't quite get that bear to run off. So, little intense moment for Ryan. He had the bear spray ready and, and uh, the handguns. Some of you all asked about the handgun stuff. Uh, you, some people said, uh, "How do you guys feel about hiking around while your while your rifle or your weapon is strapped to your?" to your uh, backpack. 
Um, we actually, as you saw in the video, I went ahead and put in there, we have those Razco uh, Kydex um, binocular harnesses, and we, we have our handguns there. I was ta carrying a, a SIG uh, 365 um, 9 millimeter. Ryan has a Ruger 9 millimeter. both pretty small guns, but yet carry quite a bit of, uh, of uh, the clips are pretty good size. We carry a few rounds in there. And then we have our bear spray. We have both carry bear spray as well. So we have two deterrents that are readily accessible on our person, on our body. If you do ditch your pack, your bear spray is typically in the belt and it hits the ground, but your bino harness almost never comes off. So having a pistol right there is handy just in case you're skinning a bear or something. We tried to kind of wear that or have it ready for us at all times, especially if we're in thicker timbered areas where we don't know if a grizz can pop up and, and come at us in wide open areas, like where we were breaking down the bear that Ryan, Ryan took, you know, we could see in all directions cause it was, it was barren and it was steep. So we were, we were on the lookout a lot, put our weapons off to the side, but in, in thicker country, you bet we're going to kind of be on guard and have a weapon at the ready for any moment. Uh, nine millimeters, not a very big round, but it does provide us with a lot of rounds. Um, but it's always a balance between weight and ease of use when you're dealing with um, a, a, a handgun in defense of a bear attack. So um, we're kind of splitting the difference with nine millimeter and, and, and then with uh, bear spray. And then we always have our rifles as well, which are large caliber and can, you know, put the hurt on something. So, but I hope you enjoyed the video. We're going to do some more podcasts, follow up podcasts about this next week. Uh, we do find chocolate and, uh, you're going to get to see that hunt unfold and, um, you'll see a lot more of Mark. Speaking of Mark Livesey, check out his e-scouting courses at Treeline Pursuits. If you haven't got it, our Mark's an awesome dude. You should get it. Um, it's, it's, it's the best e-scouting, um, lectures and courses that online. So check that out and use the code gritty. It helps me and it helps mark and if you want to get bonus content i've got a i've got some cool stuff that's going to drop on our uh stealthy uh, gritty stealthy locals community and you can uh, go to gritty.locals.com and uh join us there um if you want to become a subscriber over there you're going to get access to a bunch of exclusive content that you can only find over there. Always check out Stealthy Hunter. He's got new glassing pads for sitting on and glassing, and he uses we use those as um, the, the, the backrest for the butt of the rifle as well in a pinch, and they're just really versatile, so check those out. And the Stealthy Hunter rifle cover, you can just go to Stealthy and you'll find that. Links are all below. And also um, check out Peaks. Uh, right now it's Christmas time. Peaks has a bunch of stuff from trekking poles and gators. I can't say enough good things about the trekking poles made by Peaks. They're just durable. They can take a beating. They're lightweight. They got the carbon fiber upper, the aluminum lower. Check those out. Uh, use the code GRITTY over there. Get yourself some poles. Get some for Christmas. Now's the season. And the gators. I love the gators. The Peaks gators are off the charts. If you can't find them at Peaks, I think you can find them at Black Ovis. Uh, they're 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 an awesome awesome gator i put them up against any other gator on the market so check check those things out go to peaks peaks to uh, check those out links are below use the code gritty over there you, you know it's funny i was watching the video with my wife um and she was looking at it and she said she's like oh you guys climbed such a steep hill and, and you did this and you did that and you got these heavy packs and and, and we're driving down the road and she's like, and it's not like you and Ryan are young. Like you're not, you're old. Like you got wrinkly faces and gray hair. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thanks, honey. Thanks, honey. She's like, no, no, it's not, not to be mean. I'm just saying you guys are fit for your age. And, uh, that's, that's really a testament to how you guys live and how you guys, uh, deal with your nutrition and your fitness. And you should talk about that more. And, uh, I think, uh, she's right. We, we pride ourselves in that and we try to stay fit and healthy. And part of that is through the stealthy nutrition products that, that, uh, that you can find over at stealthy nutrition and the links I s are below from krill oil to CBD oil to gut health products, all of it, the sleep aids, I use it all and it's all awesome stuff. 
And, and that's really it for today. There's lots of uh, Black Friday sales going on. If you go to Mountain Ops and use the code Gritty, I love Ignite. I love Yeti. I love uh, some of those those products that give me that pick up and go. You can get some some stuff over there right now, 30% off if you use the code Gritty. And I believe it's 25% off right now if you use the code Gritty at Peaks. Um, big, big uh, sales until, well, basically until November 30th. So get on that right away. Um, great time to be shopping right now. If you're out there, I think all the partners we're working with are doing some deal or another. Always try to use the code gritty. Some of them we don't have a deal with, but we promote them anyway because they make good stuff and, uh, check it all out. Links are below. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks again for watching. Leave us a comment. We'll try to respond and you'll be entered to win that new Leupold range finder. Thanks again. Stay gritty. Stay gritty.